Hello, my name is Peter Poot. I'm the coordinator for the conservation biology major here at UWA and I also teach in several of the units. Uh, now in this 10 minute video, I will give you a bit of an overview of the conservation biology major and I will talk about things like uh, the units that you will study, other majors that you could combine conservation biology with and what uh, your career prospects would be. But before I do that, I will first try to give you a better idea of why it's so interesting to study conservation biology, especially if you live here in Western Australia. We live in a really in a unique part of the world, both nationally as well as internationally, uh, because Southwestern Australia is actually classified as the only global biodiversity hotspot in Australia. And that's mainly due to our extraordinary plant biodiversity. We've got over 8,000 plant species in the southwest of Australia alone. And of course, we also have many, many remarkable animal species, such as, for example, the, the thorny devil or the bilby or the, the whale shark. And of course, we also have uh, a lot of beautiful landscapes. Think, for example, about the uh, Fijal River biosphere, the Stirling Range National Park, uh, the beautiful gorges in the Pilbara and, and the Kimberley and the Ningaloo Reef. And there's every year there's millions and millions of visitors from all over the world that visit WA just because of our natural wonders. So there's really much to be proud about living here in the southwest of Western Australia, but sadly that also means there's much to be lost. And we've lost already quite a bit already, because most of you will know that large parts of the southwest of Western Australia has been cleared, mainly for agriculture. And especially in the Wheat Belt region, and also on the Swan Coastal Plain, there's areas that have already lost 95% of their native vegetation. So added to that, there's additional threats from pests and diseases and from climate change. So it's pretty clear that we are in a day and age where there's increasing threats on our natural world. And that's not something just for the southwest of WA, but it's true for the, for the rest of the world. And there's many biologists that believe that we are currently in the midst of the sixth mass extinction. And that's actually the only extinction in the history of the Earth that's due to a single species, us humans. So if you have a love for the natural world and if the story I just told you makes you a little bit sad, but also at the same time angry, then probably conservation biology is really something for you. Because conservation biology is all about preventing extinctions. And UWA is strongly committed, both through teaching as well as research, to play a major role in that. So there's two options when you enroll in a conservation biology major. You either enroll in it as a degree specific major, in the Bachelor of Science and the Bachelor of Philosophy, or you enroll in it as a second major in the Bachelor of Arts, Commerce, Design, Science or Philosophy. Now you, you can combine conservation biology with a lot of other different majors in the sciences, but the ones that particularly come to mind are of course Botany, Zoology and Marine Biology or Marine Sciences, uh, depending on whether you've got a particular interest in plants, animals or the marine environment. But of course, there's also others like natural resource management or environmental science that would really fit nicely together with conservation biology. Our experience so far is that graduates in conservation biology at UWA have really good job prospects and end up in a variety of different jobs. So for example, you could work for uh, government organizations like the Department of Environment and Conservation or the, their scientific organization, the CSIRO. But you could also end up working for botanic gardens or zoos or other conservation biology related organizations such as for example the World Wildlife Fund or Greening Australia or the WA Museum. But yeah, you may also end up working as an environmental officer for a mining company or become an environmental consultant or like me you could work at the university. Okay, so now let's st start talking about core structure. What units are you actually going to study? In the first year at level one uh, there's two core units core concepts in biology and plant and animal biology and I will now hand over to Assistant Professor Nikki Mitchell to inform you about those two units. Hi, my name is Nikki Mitchell and I'm the coordinator of first year biology at UWA. I organise our two first year units and present some of the lectures. Core concepts in biology is the first semester unit. In this unit, concepts such as biodiversity and evolution, biological structure and the central role of DNA as genetic material will be introduced, while at the same time focusing on some hot topics in contemporary biology. The themes of this unit could include understanding how species are responding to climate change, examining how plants develop resistance to herbicides and marvelling at the methods used by males to secure paternity. You also work in a group to write a short scientific article that could be published online. Plant and Animal Biology is the second semester unit. In this unit, you will learn about the diversity of life with a focus on plants, animals and fungi. You will learn how species interact with each other and their environment, how plants and animals function and exploit a wide range of environmental conditions, including the ocean. 
You will develop an understanding of how plants, animals and microorganisms assimilate energy and respond to environmental stress. We examine life history strategies and adaptations to specialised environments. We also emphasise the need to understand the processes that can lead to the decline of species in biological communities, a discipline known as conservation biology. And we draw examples from the remarkable biodiversity of Western Australia that has evolved in isolation on a very ancient continent. There's also two complementary units at level one, and they're called Science, Society and Communication, and Science, Society and Data Analysis. And in both those units, um, you will learn about the major resource issues that the world's facing. So I'm talking here about food, water and energy. And you will also at the same time learn about, well, you will be taught some communication skills and some general data analysis skills. Okay, then we will move to level two. So at level two, there's again two core units and two complementary units. The core units are ecology and conservation biology. In ecology, you will learn about the major factors that drive plant and animal species distribution patterns. And you will learn how species interact with each other as well as with their natural environment. And you will also learn things like setting up ecological experiments and how to sample plants and animals from natural populations. In conservation biology, and that's one of the units that I teach in, you will learn about topics such as what biodiversity is there and how did it get there? Why should we bother conserving biodiversity? What are the threatened genes, species and communities? And what are the actions that we can take to conserve biodiversity? So in this unit you will also have the opportunity to become a real specialist on the endangered species in a particular plant and animal group together with a team of students and you will visit the major conservation biology related organizations in the state such as such as king's park and botanic gardens the Perth zoo the wa museum of course the department of environment and conservation and the world wildlife fund there's also two complementary units at level two first one is principles of inheritance in which you will learn about the inheritance of traits and how important genetic variation is, especially if you're interested in the fate, if improving the fate of small and isolated populations of endangered species. The second complementary unit is global climate change and biodiversity, in which you will learn about the processes that regulate the Earth's climate, and you will learn about the role climate change has played in the development of the current ecosystems in the world, uh, the evidence for human-induced climate change and what effect climate change is having at the moment on species and ecosystems. In the third year there are four core units and the first two of those are quite different than the others because they're both field-based units that are taught out of semester at the end of January and early February in Albany. And in those two units um, you have an opportunity as a student to stay in the camp together with all other students for the duration of the two units, which is approximately three weeks. But of course that will attract a small extra fee to cover for the food and accommodation costs. So the first one of the field-based units is called Saving the Endangered Species and that's a unit that I teach in. It's a unit that's been set up in very close collaboration with the Department of Environment and Conservation in Albany. It's a unit in which you will learn about the threatened species and communities of the beautiful South Coast region and about the process of threatened species recovery planning. We will also do, uh, have, have some field work days in which we will do measurements on populations of endangered plant species and these measurements will actually, the data of these measurements will actually be provided to the Department of Environment and Conservation. You will also work in teams on developing a multi-species management plan of the endangered species of the South Coast region. So the second field-based unit is called Ecosystem Restoration. In that unit you will learn about things like how to estimate the degree of ecosystem degradation, how to set realistic restoration goals, how to identify appropriate restoration options, how to deal with exotic species and how to measure and evaluate restoration success. And in the practical part of the unit um, you will learn how to sample aquatic plants and animals in a riverside restoration project and you will learn how to do some basic physical and chemical measurements. Apart from the field-based units there's two other core units in the second semester. The first one is called ecological processes and the aim of that unit is to teach you how to use your knowledge on ecological processes to interpret and evaluate current environmental change and how to set up a research program to tackle current environmental problems. The second unit is called wildlife conservation and management in which you will learn about the current issues in wildlife management in Australia as well as elsewhere. You, you will discuss 
different management strategies that you can adopt to protect endangered species and to control feral animals. And you will also discuss the commercial exploitation of animal populations and the effects that has. So in all of the units that I've mentioned so far, you will also be further trained in your communication and data analysis skills, as both these skills are really highly regarded by future employers. Overall, apart from the field-based units, you can expect four to five contact hours per unit per week, and that's then divided over lectures, labs and tutorials. And we also expect you to have four to five hours of independent studies for each unit each week. After you finish the conservation biology major, you should really consider enrolling for a fourth and fifth year to specialize further, because nowadays, most employers really prefer students that have done a fourth and fifth year at university. So you can enroll in a master's by coursework in conservation biology. You can specialize further in areas that are of real interest to you. For example, restoration ecology, conservation genetics, or marine sciences. And in the fifth year of your master's, so that's the second year of your master's, you can also do a research project. Alternatively, you can do a one-year honors degree in year four with the option of doing a master's. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this short video and you feel much better informed about what the conservation biology major entails. And if it really appeals to you, do enroll in conservation biology and I'm really looking forward to meeting you in person.